Hi everyone and welcome back to another Ready to Ride Pilates for Horse Rider session. I hope you are really fired up and ready to go. If you haven't done a warm-up session, please go and do one now. This is going to be quite hard work on your upper body. If you um, are not a horse rider, please don't go away. If you are fit and ready to do this sort of level of Pilates, this session will suit you absolutely perfectly. We're focusing on upper body control because that is the foundation of having a good light and steady contact. So we are going to start just loosening off through your upper body before you get going and I want you to feel as if you are drawing up from the base of your spine really lengthening upwards right out through the top of your head and feeling really elastic through your spine and through your neck then check your shoulders are nice and loose so do some nice uh, rolls up back and down particularly if you've just been at work or racing around make sure you're loose not tense before you start working also this helps to get your circulation a little bit focus on that upper body area okay then we're going to take ourselves down onto the mat so we're going to do a little bit of a roll down because it's a nice way of loosening off through your body so you're going to tuck your chin into your chest and then slide your hands down curling up through your spine as you go pause at the bottom for a breath in breathe out slide your hands back up tuck down with your bottom and uncurl to the top of your neck and again chin in and this time focus on moving every single vertebrae through your neck, between your shoulders, the middle of your spine, right down to the base of your spine. Another breath in, and this time bend your knees as you breathe out, and we're going down onto your front. And we're going to start off doing an exercise called the swan dive, and you need to have your arms out to the side and elbows bent to 90 degrees. For you guys doing this at home, you want to be facing down onto your mat. I'm gonna look at you because then you can hear me better. So you want to draw your shoulder blades back and down. That lifts the front of your shoulders away from the floor. Bring your tummy away from that imaginary puddle of water and take your pelvic floor lift onto floor three. Then you are simultaneously going to lift your arms, head and neck and take them all back down together. So it's check shoulder blades, tummy, pelvic floor, lift and slowly back down together. You're keeping your lift really small. If you lift it too high, you'll end up just arching through your low back, sinking down through your tummy, and that's not what you want. We're looking for a small, subtle, controlled movement. Make sure that you are breathing and not fixing through your diaphragm. And also watch what happens with your elbows. Make sure that they don't lead and also come down last. You want everything to move that little small movement all together. Do a couple more. Okay, then we're going to move on to an exercise called the breaststroke. And for this, you need to have your hands underneath your head. Now I'm gonna to have to demonstrate this properly. So watch me go through this first of all. Okay, so the setup is the same. Shoulder blades back and down, tummy away from the puddle of water and pelvic floor onto floor three. And then you again lift arms, head and neck all together. Hold that position whilst you do your breaststroke arms. Okay, so this is not the easiest of exercises. I appreciate that. You've got to hold that lift position quite a long time. Again, make sure that you're keeping breathing. I think as a rider, that is so important. The last thing you want is for tension to creep in and for you to start holding your breath and then for that to transmit as tension through to the horse. So although this is hard, Keep breathing. Keep checking shoulder blades, tummy, and pelvic floor. We'll do one more. Okay, super job. We're now going to prop up onto your forearms. I'm going to do an exercise called the leg pull. So not so much to set up this time. I want you to have your shoulder blades back and down as much as you can though. And then you are going to activate your pelvic floor onto floor three and lift your pelvis and slowly back down. Check shoulder blades, tummy, pelvic floor, lift, and slowly back down. Nice and simple. We're gonna make it a little bit harder. Tuck your toes underneath your feet. Same thing again. Shoulder blades, pelvic floor, lift, lift, down, down. Or if you prefer, you can go straight up into a sort of semi-plank position and slowly back down. So the choice is yours, you can go straight up straight down or you can go lift lift down down whichever feels best for you keeping shoulder blades and pelvic floor active each one that you do 
And what we're watching with this is that you don't end up with your bottom stuck up in the air, or as you lift, you end up with your pelvis just hovering off the floor. We're looking for that basic straight line, shoulders, hips to knees. Okay, we're gonna make it a little bit harder before we move on, just for a few reps. So check your shoulder blades and pelvic floor into your lift, and then hold that position while you lift each leg in turn, just a few times. And again, make sure you're still breathing. Okay, pelvic floor, and come back down. Then we're going to turn onto your side. And we're going to do a variation of the side bend exercise. We're going to go straight in pretty hard with this one. So have your elbow comfortably underneath your shoulder. If you get sore shoulders, you might find this one a little bit tricky. So just be gentle on yourself. Check you're in your capital L, straight line shoulders, hips, knees, top arm resting onto your top side. Float your top leg, activate your pelvic floor, and then you're lifting pelvis and top arm at the same time. You're looking for that synchronized motion of pelvis and arm. So think about when you're riding, very often you've got arms and legs doing different things but all occurring at the same time. So it's very important that your brain can coordinate and keep nice and fluid. Okay, we're gonna make it a little bit harder and this time you're going to straighten the top leg at the same time. So now we're adding in three components. We've got arm, leg and pelvis. Hopefully your pelvic floor is still onto floor three. And with a bit of luck, you're still breathing. Remember, keep breathing. Don't fix and do one more. Okay, then we go straight away onto the other side. So I'm going to swing round. Once again, prop up into your capital L position. Top arm onto your top side. Pelvic floor onto floor three. Float your top leg. And we're going for that simultaneous lift. And obviously this is working your glutes quite a lot as well, added bonus of this exercise. But we are predominantly looking for that synchronised movement of pelvis and arm. Keeping your pelvic floor and keeping breathing. A couple more like this. And then we're going to add in the leg. So adding in that third component. So we've got arm, leg and pelvis, hopefully <gasps> vaguely going in a synchronized fashion and the pelvic floor and the breathing lots to think about and we're looking for that smooth controlled movement with the arm that's on the move lots of stability with the arm that is balancing last one okay super job we're now going to go up onto your hands and knees and we're going to do your leg pull from this position so you want to start with your hands just in front of your shoulders knees approximately underneath your hips, doesn't have to be perfect, and toes tucked under your feet. Try to have a vaguely flat back, so imagine you've got a tray of drinks balanced on your back. Pelvic floor onto floor three, then you're lifting your knees and pushing forwards, back over and down. So double check, shoulder blades, pelvic floor, lift, over and back down. Make sure before you come back down, you've had that little bit of a hover over the knees first. If you get sore wrists, you might find the next level of this exercise is a little bit too much. Okay, a couple more, just like this. Keeping your breathing, keeping the pelvic floor. Okay, so the next one we do, you're going to stay in position. And then we're gonna add on just a little bit of extra challenge. So pelvic floor, lift the knees and over. And then we're going to do alternate knees to chest-ish, keeping your shoulders as level as you can, keeping your pelvic headlights as level as you can, keep your pelvic floor onto floor three, and watch that you don't start to stick your bottom up. So look at that straight-ish line, shoulders, hips to knees, keep breathing. One more with each leg, super job. Back over the knees, down, super. Okay. I'm going to come up into standing. I have got a resistance band. You don't have to use a resistance band for these if you don't want to. A pair of tights is fine. You don't have to use anything at all. One of the reasons I like to use a resistance band, particularly the second one, is to get a lot of good visual feedback. So we're going to start off doing uh, a movement pattern really, but it's a really good strength for your shoulders. We're going to do it on one leg though. So have one end of your band underneath the foot you're standing on the other end in your opposite hand. 
turn that hand thumb in above your hip check your shoulder blades are back and down activate your ropes from ribs to pelvis and pelvic floor onto floor three and then you're doing a night fever move always gets called the night fever exercise in my classes everyone knows what i mean if this hurts don't go the whole way go to 90 degrees instead so do what works for your shoulder and your arm is turning up and out so you want to be thinking at the top of it almost like hailing a cab and then down and in so it's up and out down and in and this exercise is brilliant for activating all your shoulder stabilizing muscles obviously without weight bearing and also what's great about this is it takes those muscles through a really big range okay and by standing on one leg it just makes it a whole load harder okay we're going to swap do the same thing on the other side so once again onto one leg band in opposite hand hand turn in towards your hip and pelvis shoulder blades back and down activate your ropes and your pelvic floor then it's up and out down and in so going with your thumb inwards to your thumb up and out she says falling over always make sure this movement is coming from your shoulders that's where you want that feeling of shoulder blades being back and down what you don't want to do is find you sort of lifting through the whole of your shoulder blades so you're thinking back and down moving from the shoulder once again if it's uncomfortable just go to the halfway point absolutely fine and you may well find that one arm finds it much easier than the other not a problem you just obviously want to work until they feel the same although it may be that your balance uh, affects that too okay we're going to move on to one last exercise again we're going to do this on one leg but if your balance is not so good or you're getting a bit tired by all means do this on both legs at the same time um, so we're going to stand on one leg and have your band not on a particular amount of tension this is where it's going to be a real visual feedback for you so if you don't have a band just hold a tray or something in your hands it's absolutely fine it's the feedback that you want shoulder blades back and down activate your ropes and pelvic floor and then we're going to go into a little squat and do a give and retake of the reins and as you're doing your give and retake of the reins think each time you come back shoulder blades back and down also keep an eye on your hands and watch that they're staying level think about that even contact into the horse's mouth your hands aren't doing the same thing you can make this a little bit harder if you want go into full-on jumping position get a bit of a test of balancing it on one leg always pulling back and down with your shoulder blades each time you come back up okay we'll swap and go onto the other leg get your balance before you start shoulder blades tummy pelvic floor and then off we go thinking that nice even given we take over the reins level hands drawing back with your shoulder blades each time okay and then we can turn it a little bit harder into a full-on jumping position so going right forward level hands drawing back and down with those shoulder blades Oop. Off she goes. The old wobble is fine. I don't have a horse underneath me. I'm not actually going to fall off. Last one. Okay, then we're going to pop the band down. And then we're just going to loosen off once again. So a few of those shoulder rolls, always good to do at the end of a session. If you want to, a nice little stretch is taking that arm across and just giving yourself a stretch. I find though, for most people with this one, it feels really good. You will find that each shoulder you feel it somewhere slightly different but that's okay straight down through your hands then we'll finish with your upper back stretch so hands together but turned over push your hands forwards and away for a nice big stretch and then up above your head for another good big stretch do this from the side you can see what my back does so as you go forwards you'll feel that you're really rounding through your back that's good and as you get to the top you're almost arching through your back do one last one so forwards stretch everything and then reach up nice breath in at the top if you want and then bring your arms back down okay just check before you finish you've still got that nice long elastic spine pulling you up tall and let your shoulders drop back and down okay so you've worked really pretty hard in that session i suggest that you find a nice easy one to just go and switch off calm down cool off before you rush off and do whatever you're going to do next hopefully that's been really useful i'm going to be doing a session on more about 
contact control coming up in the next few weeks. I hope that will fit in really nice with what you've done today. Make sure you keep going at this. The more you do it, the better you will be in the saddle. Thank you for joining me and take care and I will see you next time. Bye bye.